De-escalation file loading. I worked for Norfolk Southern Railroad, was responsible for every operation that went on with the yard, unloading the trains, spaying the vehicles, and then uh, making sure that the auto haulers were, were outgating everything that's uh, a factor in operations at that yard. There was one particular incident that kind of raised my attention. Uh, I was sitting in a team's meeting and I could hear some of the vendors that were working there. The conversation got pretty heated to the point to where I left the meeting, went to see what the commotion was all about. Encountering an altercation between two or more individuals can be jarring and possibly dangerous to your own safety. What's your emergency? First, quickly assess your surroundings. Look for weapons. Survey the physical layout of the immediate area. Are there exits? Other hazards? Finally, assess the crowd. How many people are involved? Might anyone nearby be willing and able to help intervene? Does anyone appear to be further aggravating the situation? Call emergency services and do not attempt to intervene if any of the following are true. Weapons are present. The fight has escalated to the point that punches are being thrown. Your own health or safety would be otherwise compromised by intervening. I uh, had two vendors standing up yelling. They were close enough and posturing um, to where you know, I thought that there would be some physical activity going on. Um, they didn't, uh, you know, it, it was gonna lead to a fight. They were actually fighting uh, over um, uh, a parking space. <laughs> so it was really um, something very minor. Someone was supposed to rebay some vehicles and uh, one guy said he was not gonna do it. And uh, another guy parked some other vehicles there. And um, so it ended up being an argument. If you determine it is safe to intervene in an altercation, the first step should be to attempt to create distance between the individuals, at least four feet if possible. If you remember from the study of proxemics, this is the social zone, which is an optimal distance for de-escalation. If there is a crowd that has gathered, ask them to leave. Next, explain why it is not in either of their best interests to get involved in a fight. For example, appeal to their ability to talk through their issues like adults. Remind them they are not setting a good example of conflict resolution for their co-workers and families. Remind them someone could get seriously hurt. Or remind them that they could lose their job for violating Jack Cooper's workplace violence policy. Or they could even be arrested for criminal assault. Finally, provide a next step for the individuals involved. Often, a good next step is to ask to speak to each individual separately. This is especially true if you are a supervisor or have authority over the individuals. Start with the person who is more aggressive. This reduces risk the more aggressive individual will continue to create problems while you are speaking with the other individual. However, ensure the individual is calm enough not to pose a safety risk. You may ask a neutral third person to sit in on the conversation for your safety. I immediately stepped in. I physically separated them, uh, stepped between them. Um, you know, uh, just kind of walked one guy away and uh, had the other guy to, uh, to sit in my office while I talked to this guy. And I told him that I would be back to talk with him uh, after I spoke with the first gentleman. No matter what the uh, incident was about or uh, you know the outcome of, of the argument that we were here to do a job both guys just they listened um, and and we went on and had a had a, a good day de-escalation complete <laughs>